I can do anything. All right, let's go. Watch the feet. Whose mine or yours? Your feet and my priceless seedlings. I swear your nosiness will be the death of you. All right. Okay, so let's go look at the blacksmith. Nighttime? Quit? Done for the day? Handcraft. Don't know any of that. Orbit drawings. Uh, I've already read that. Alchemy station. Yeah, let's make some health potions. Yeah, I don't have enough save. Even the tissue damage caused by the plague in the body and mind. When the account will share what I learned when I was personally confronted with progressing the devastation caused the Red Death, as I try to discover more about the changes it wrecks on our fueled bodies. I'm afraid I do not have much time left, but I hope my observations are transcribed by my brothers for future benefit. I was provided with decreased preserve, uh, preserved in a good state, undisturbed by external factors. No cuts, no punctures, no trauma. Lying before me are a woman, a man, and a child. They were once a family. Parents died on the way to the island asylum. The child dies just two days ago. 
too. I started with the father, made a shallow incision, eight fingers long, the length of a thumb, of the incision, I made another. This time much deeper, give me access to the skull. I removed the flap of skin and drain the excess blood. With the drill, I scraped the bone canopy, the sapient part of the soul, so I could see the brain. Trepanation must always be performed with the utmost precision. Tissue is in, is in dismal state. Which part of the... Magnesio? Great affected by the plague. Estimatavia is non-existent. This might have been caused by the agonal vision seeping from the blood, uh, the bleeding heart straight into the mind. These visions are represented every dying individual, causing them to either ecstasy or to increase distress. Outcast exiled of my home by the Red Death. The struggle continues on the holy island of Avalon. When I hear the word, I follow. I shall not think ill of the word or anything else against it. I shall not defy the priests, for they allow the word. If the word tells me to kill, then I should kill. If the word tells me to take something from my brother or sister, I shall take it. The word is my soul's grace. In the face of the plague, I seek solace only in the word, not in the false god and prophets. With my faith and testimony, it's a set example for other outcasts. I'm going to read this one. The second, yet many unruly, corrupt, and indolent. They claim to know the prophet, but the deeds tell a different story, sold by their minds and their conscience. The prophet sees all and casts filth upon their flesh. Their skin is covered in red marks. It festers and flicks off their bodies. It consumes them from inside like an unquenchable fire. The Red Death does not, does not only take their lives, but also deprives them of their souls and the chance for salvation. There is, however, hope for the For the prophet says, renounce your unwillingness, dishonesty, and indolence. Take my word to your lips and hearts. Your soul will be purified as mine was purified. Thus says the prophet, trust my disciples, trust in me, for they will lead you towards a, a cure. You bring them, bring harm to them, whether with deeds, words, or thought, it will be as if you brought harm to me, for that needs to be punished. Seven commandments. Brother Buster. All right, Brother Abe. Abby? I don't know how to pronounce his name, but... Heard about him before. Country Brothers Lustin's uh, assumptions that the lower level of the island sum is nothing more than a narrow yet impressive system of vaults limited only to the area building complex above. It appears there is no end to its tunnel and corridors. Moreover, I have suspected that it might not only span the entire island but just far beyond its boundaries. While I would not want to belittle Brother Lustin's commendable achievements during this exploration of the lower levels, he seemed to have been all too eager to accept the potential dead ends to be exactly what they appeared. Furthermore, my research has confirmed from time to time that the most places he marked as closed off passages proved to be buried tunnels leading further into the complex. As the doctrine dictates, determination yields results. Have rewarded generously for our own. At the end of one of those tunnels, once dismissed as closed off, we have reached a vast chamber. In the middle of it, a menhir, a magnificent, a magnificent monument, yet quite unusual. It is truly an underground wonder, as it may revolutionize our perception of mystery statues.
Okay. If you're here to see the healer, don't bother. He's a quack and a butcher who likes to watch people suffer. It's a serious accusation. And I mean it. He's a know-it-all from Camelot, but the truth is, he doesn't know shit. All those learned types think they're better than us village folk, just cause they read a book. And we've been getting by just fine without any of their crap. Say that. I came to him with a toothache, asked him to make me something for the pain, and you know what he did? He said my tooth is rotten, and then sent me to Osprey to get it pulled out. Sounds reasonable. Sounds like horse crap. My grandma was smarter than your lot, and she couldn't even read. She knew how to make a proper potion for a toothache. If I was any good at mixing that stuff, I wouldn't need to deal with quacks like Heber. I even gave him my grandma's recipe, but he said it was no good. You stole the recipe? No, Heber took it, the plonker. Said if I don't know how to make it, I shouldn't have it. And that he doesn't want some questionable homebrew medicine spreading through the keep. If you remove your tooth, you won't need the potion. Oh yeah? And then what? Another and another? Give it a few years and I'll be left with no teeth! Ah, leave me alone. Oh no! By saying that, I can't do the quest. Oh ho ho. Your heart weighs a lot. Now these books don't sell for crap. Just throw them out. Don't weigh much though. The tong. That's so much extra stuff. Mandrake root, parsley, and a pig's heart. How is this supposed to make any First sense? First thing you say when you wake How up. Did it even work. Oh, sorry. Do I know you? I'm terrible with faces. Either way, glad to make your acquaintance. I'm Jean Heber, a physician raised in Camelot and trained in the Royal Academy. The recipe you're whispering to yourself. It's some local witchcraft I've been trying to make sense of. I guess I'll find out when I try it. Try it on yourself? Experience is the best teacher. Don't worry, I'm not testing anything on the others. Graham the Mad, a great Camelotian physician, used to say that a real doctor would never give his patient something he hadn't tried on himself first. A wise approach, which I follow myself. Graham the Mad, don't you see the irony? What irony? Uh, is, that, is that dangerous? The pursuit of knowledge is always dangerous. That's why it's reserved for only the bravest of the brave. It takes true guts to face the unknown, to realize just how little you know and how insignificant you are to the world. Tread on me. Oh, that was unexpected. Here, take it. What will happen, I have no idea. But please, tell me, if you live to find out. S 
So you're not a fan of uh, local remedies? I was classically trained in the proper art of medicine by the scholars of Camelot. I didn't hear what he said in the beginning. Things they do here? Make that. <laughs> they make no sense. No sense at all. Most of this stuff shouldn't even be effective. Yet it seems to work wonders on these simple-minded, tough-bodied people here in the South. Why do you even study this stuff? Shipments from Camelot are late, so I'm running low on supplies. If I'm not able to treat them, they'll start complaining. And Fergus doesn't like when people complain, especially when it comes to their health. He truly cares about them, I've got to admit. He doesn't care much about anyone else, though. What exactly are you doing here? Healing diseases. Sometimes cutting people open. Oh, and pulling out teeth seems to be a leading cause of concern for everyone around here. Me pulling teeth in the arse end of the world? My friends back in Camelot would laugh their brains out. It's like you're in dire need of sleep. I don't dream about anything anymore. So sleep feels like a waste of precious time. Fortunately, back in Camelot, I found a mix of remedies that can keep me awake for a whole week. It was quite popular in our study group. Are you sure the recipe? Oh, no. Every physician needs his secrets. But I can sell you some if you promise not to tell any of the higher-ups. Why wouldn't you want the leadership to come? There are... side effects. Oh. You won't fall asleep for a while, but the moment you do, well... You'll feel like you died and came back to life, only to die again. So you either take the next dose or endure it. I can endure it because I don't have a post to attend to. But our brave soldiers, well, that'd be risky. Uh, anything I can do to help? Uh... Why would you, though? Don't you have better things to do? Trying to get in the quartermaster's good books. Aha, got it. So you're up for work, not out of the goodness of your heart, but as long as it gets you what you need. Doesn't everybody have an agenda? Good point. That is a very good point. But all right, if you're a mercenary, then I do have a job for someone who'd be willing to risk their life in exchange for material goods. Just tell me what needs to be done. Straight to the point, eh? All right. I need someone to perform a ritual within a stone circle nearby. You go there, read a spell, do whatever needs to be done, come back and tell me exactly what happened. All right. Oh, can I sell you? Sage. Do you have Sage? Let's sell you these books. It's not helping me on my weight. It's all of this crafting stuff. We're gonna have to end up selling it. Don't feel bad at selling it because what if I need it? It makes something really good and I just sold a bunch of it. What if I can wake him up and get the, get the recipe? No. I don't remember what he said.
Let me guess. Camelot, no? Timberwall, also no? So you're not from the north? Ah, of course. You must be from Quanacht. I should have guessed that right away. So who's in charge there now? You're from Quanacht, why do you care? Oh, I was just wondering what's going on out there. Here in the south, we have our own affairs. What happens out there in the world? Well, the news doesn't always travel all the way here. And they should. It's in our common interest. You know, people are talking about rising unrest in the north, and a secret coalition preparing a coup at the highest levels of power. And that whole plague thing is just a tool to reach their final goal. The Red Priests are also trying to get something out of it. And it's not going too bad for them, to be honest. The Druids are out of the picture already. Is there a coalition? A coup? Well, sure. They want to establish a new order on our island. And it's not clear who's involved in the whole mess. Maybe... Maybe our captain is even involved? Hell knows. They'll have their people everywhere. Damn it! You could be one of them too! Hmm. Although when I look at you, I don't think so. You have such a stupid face. <laughs> With all due respect, of course. Hey, thanks! You don't look all that smart either. You see? It takes one to know one. And that means we're just pawns. Folks like us won't change anything. But we have to talk out loud. It suits them when everyone keeps their mouth shut. And how would I recognize someone from the secret? That's the case. Those sons of bitches are good at hiding. They kind of blend in and live among us. It's hard to tell if it's hideous magic or some other tricks. Are you suggesting that someone intentionally caused the plague? Wait a minute. I'm not suggesting anything here. I'm just thinking out loud. It doesn't make sense that the plague appeared just like that. Out of bloody nowhere? Hell no. It's a high-stakes game. So what's at stake? Power over us, of course. Over our bodies and souls. Over Avalon. Over the whole damn course of history. Or... Wait, that is Excalibur? Man, that hurts me trying to get it. All right. I am going to guess that I have no chest. Story of my lovely stuff. I'm selling it all. Sir. I haven't seen you before. I wasn't expecting any guests. And you don't look like a new recruit. And yet, Odrin lets you in. He's not drinking again, I hope. I is pretty drunk. Most unfortunate. But that explains why you just strutted into the horns. I'm afraid I'll have to take action. The name's Fiergus. And I assume you already know that I'm the quartermaster here. Now. State your business. And please, try to be convincing, or the walls of this fortress will be the last thing you'll ever see. Got this pin from a friend. I assume you know what it means. Yes, I know. And that's why you're still standing in front of me. However, these pens were only given to certain people. They mean that in times of trouble, these people will always find a safe haven here in the Horns. And this makes me wonder to your friend 
crazy. We got shipwrecked along the way. I assume he's dead. But he could have made it. If what you're saying is true, he must have had a deal with someone well above my pay grade. And that leaves only the captain. However, if you're lying, then you might as well have just confessed to the murder of a knight of the round table. But nobody's that much of a fool, I think. Wait, was Fortunately it for you, I've seen my fair share of morons in life, and you don't look like one. Fortunately for me, I was just told I looked stupid. Only means that I'm to make sure you're safe in the horns. Nothing about helping you out with whatever you're up to. And let me guess. If you have friends among the knights, then you'll be wanting to talk to the captain, right? Well, that ain't happening anytime soon. Why? Because I said so. What? Did you really expect that you could just enter our keep and head straight for the captain's quarters? There wouldn't be much point in having walls and guards here if anyone could just do that, would there? Anyway, welcome to the Horns of the South. Make yourself at home. So what will it take for you uh, to let me talk to the captain? First of all, you have to prove yourself trustworthy and capable. I can't let just anyone into the captain's quarters. He's a very busy man, you see. I don't want to waste his time. What needs to be doing? I'm not going to threaten him. We've been having trouble with the dead lately. The kind that don't want to rest in peace. There are more and more of them roaming the area. It might just be the weirdness, as it has been steadily creeping closer from the north, but somehow I doubt it. Seems like the problem lies in the old cemetery. As far as I know, the fog hasn't reached it yet. You could go there and find out what's happening. you have any idea what might cause in it? There is a local legend about a dark druid named... Slaughter? Oh. Slaudier? Slaughter, that was it. He was a necromancer rumored to be able to raise the dead and make them do his bidding. It's quite an old legend, though, so unless he managed to raise himself from the dead, I doubt he's behind this. Tell me more about the cemetery. It's old. From what I've heard, it even predates the Horns of the South. The keepers and the people from the village below used to bury their dead there, but after the flood, it's been pretty much abandoned. What? Yeah, damn druids. They flooded a village of innocent people just to show everyone they're still in power. Fat lot of good it did them. I'm not gonna lie, I'm glad we got rid of them. The things they could do were unnatural. Where's the cemetery? After you leave the keep, just turn left and then stay on the road. Here, I'll mark it on the map for you. Sending your men to investigate? The captain forbade anyone from leaving the keep, so I couldn't. And truth be told, I didn't particularly want to. We don't get many recruits, and you're, well. Disposal. Poor cape. <laughs> your words, not mine. I'll do it. Good. Try not to get yourself killed and get rid of whatever's been causing the problem. About the Forgotten Cemetery. Yes? Did you find out what's been happening out there? Why not? Don't tell me you're afraid of ghosts. Just don't annoy them and you'll be fine. Found a piece of metal with an inscription. Do you know what it is? That's one of our tags. Every soldier gets one when they pledge their loyalty. I just hope the body you took it from was already cold. Because killing a keeper would land you in some serious trouble. You know, here's what I'm thinking on that. If you stumble over any of our fallen keepers out there, bring me their tags. Sure, they're sworn to stay here till the bitter end, but they have families who deserve to know what became of them. It's part of my duty, but since I can't send any more beyond these walls, maybe you could lend a hand. I'll pay you for every tag you bring back. I think I have a couple. I have another tag. You know where to find me if you come across any more. Oh, it gives me a hundred for 